All right, today we're gonna learn how to paint the Northern Lights. All right, so what year is the Call of the Wild set in? All right, let's run through the colors. Pearly red, twin red, Indian yellow, red oxide, cad yellow, primary yellow, quin blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, titanium white, Mars black. For our first layer, we kind of laid in that blue. Um, it's pretty blue here. We might make it a little more turquoise with a little more green in that. Um, we've added in kind of an initial layer of the sky. Uh, we'll have to add color on top of that. So we're gonna have to let this fully dry, add the color, and then come back in again. Um, so you gotta do this multi layers when you do this uh, to get it right, because the next layer is you wanna do gloss. And then you kind of wanna use white if you need to, but then always kind of be doing gloss with color and then kind of white highlights on top of that throw in the stars, let it dry, and then gloss. So it's continually multiple layers in this to get it right. We've added in kind of a preliminary sketch of the mountains in gray. This will be darker, more closer to this color probably, right here, this is dark. So I'll just kind of edge that in in the next layer after this fully dries. All right, today we're gonna kind of use the gloss and cover up the white, so that'll give it a nice translucence level, and we'll kind of um, add those varying colors. Right now it's kind of a stark contrast in the sky, which is cool, but we want to get more realistic blends with the um, Borealis, Northern Lights. I got to fill in the sea. It's kind of okay. Um, it's more of a turquoise color, so I think I need to kind of change it up a little bit. Got to fill this in. This should be a lot darker, really make that pop. Um, same here with the mountains. That should be really dark. So the highlights should be here and in the um, ocean or sea itself. <music> that next layer in we got a little more more tense on the uh, borealis we got a little bit of dragging motion going on there with the overlay of the gloss so we'll see how that works out probably have to do a little bit more gloss and then touch up with the white work that back and forth see how that goes we're getting a little bit better on that see it's getting a little greener feel I'm not sure if there's reflections are quite right right now I think um, I might touch those up in the next layer well let me go touch those up now and then come back <laughs> So we got that second layer in here. We got kind of a little bit of night sky. I've darkened the corners in to get a little bit more intensity, whitened this, uh, gone over it a couple times. So you got kind of a blend. You got a little bit of that glazing effect happening. And I've added the glaze a little bit in the water. It's not really there in the photo, but I think it just makes more realistic to parallel this. We got the land, we've added some snow on here. I'm not sure how realistic that snow looks. It looks like gray, I don't know what. So we might have to really touch that up. It's kind of a weird color because it's in the real blues of white so you, you kind of wanted to make a read like white so it's a little bit tricky we had a little bit of white in here um might need to clean that up um and make those mountain look a little bit more realistic or right now they kind of look like lines um so yeah we'll see how it goes in the next layer so the Qu call of the wild is a book written by jack london uh, a famous outdoorsman writer and he spent a whole year up in alaska in 1903 but for the book he kind of set it in and maybe it was just for the movie, but they set it back into the time frame of the gold rush when they had all these sled dogs. And that was interesting because um, in the movie, they 
um, have the telegraph come out right at the same time so that the telegraph kind of ends their need for the bobsled, which kind of is a plot device in the movie, but I don't think that was really <laughs> originally in the book. In the book, he kind of, book kind of runs away from the dog sled guy and then ventures out in the wilderness. And so here they kind of put in Harrison Ford as kind of filler for the back end of the film because they didn't want to just have it on the dog, which is all CGI, right? So they didn't know if the dog, all CGI, is going to be able to carry the film alone. So they kind of craft the story in the movie around the characters that are helping out Buck. So they change it up a little bit in the book, but they're basically true to the story. And so that's kind of the history of the Call of the Wild. All right, we just finished the painting. Let's take a closer look. So we got this really intense sky with the dark purples. Um, you got the Borealis coming up, kind of that really sky blue luminescence, which you do see in the Borealis. I have a little bit of that reflected into the water itself with a really dark kind of water. Uh, we have that kind of gray rock, maybe that snow on top. Um, originally, I was gonna do another layer on this, which I probably could do and make it a little bit better, but you know, I'm just not feeling too super uh, inspired today, I guess with the coronavirus. <laughs> Artists are having struggles to paint to be inspired. Uh, I really think the Borealis themselves are very inspiring. So that's kind of what I want to get across in this message. The really power of nature really in the sky is very interesting with the solar winds hitting the atmosphere and creating the northern lights is really spectacular and also kind of shows you, you know, how precarious life is on Earth. Because if that layer was any lower, we'd be wiped out. <laughs> but, you know, that's a little bit darker. Um, Hopefully you guys like it. Give me a thumbs up. If you want to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next painting video. Thanks for watching, guys.